first speaker is Sim Land. Uh, Sim Land is from Estonia. He is a biohacker with a degree in cultural and social anthropology. He is a self-published best-selling author uh, and an online entrepreneur. His focus covers a wide range of topics from health and fitness to productivity and mindset. His ideas involve human health enhancement through body and mind empowerment. Um, the theme of his presentation is uh, circadian uh, NAD, NAD, uh, how to turn on your body's longevity pathways. Uh, thank you for being with us today, Seem. Hello, my name is Seem Lund, and I'm glad to be speaking at this event. And if you haven't heard about me before, then I'm an author, speaker, content creator, anthropologist, and an entrepreneur in the field of uh, biohacking and self-optimization. So my speech is going to be about circadian NAD, which talks about activating your body's pathways for increasing longevity and health span. I'm going to start with a quote by a Nobel Prize uh, laureate, Hans von Euler Schelpin, who has said that NAD is one of the most widespread and biologically most important activators within the plant and animal world. So uh, this is what we're going to talk about, this kind of very critical and crucial, let's say, enzyme involved in uh, health. So what is NAD? NAD is uh, short for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and essentially it's an uh, enzyme that is involved with pretty much everything, primarily energy production and converting food into energy. NAD is involved with uh, virtually everything inside the body. The most important roles have to do with uh, different kinds of longevity genes and anti-aging epigenetics, DNA repair, energy production, reduction of inflammation, antioxidant defense, genome stability, as well as exercise performance. So it is, yeah, quite like a, you know, uh, central to pretty much everything. And energy, we need energy to do everything inside the body. And NAD is kind of uh, the shuffler of different um, electrons around. From an anti-aging perspective, then uh, we have noticed, or studies have noticed, that uh, low levels of NAD, they do promote all the hallmarks of aging. So there are these uh, discovered different kinds of hallmarks of aging that describe the aging process. And if you have low levels of NAD, then uh, you tend to accumulate all of those uh, hallmarks. And the main ones are DNA damage, loss of proteostasis, or uh, this uh, removal of uh, proteins, mitochondrial dysfunction, cell senescence, compromised autology, stem cell exhaustion, epigenetic alterations, deregulated nutrient sensing, altered cell communication, and telomere attrition. So yeah, low levels of NAD walk hand in hand with the um, characteristics of aging. And we also see that uh, NAD levels drop by more than half with age. So you have less than half of the NAD you had in your teenage years um, when you are uh, 40 or in your middle age and when you are in the elderly years like 70 or 80 then you have a very like a fraction of the NAD you had in your youth and this you know theoretically could be the reason why people start to accumulate aging and age rate diseases you know around their middle ages so when you're young you can get away with pretty much everything in terms of the diet and you know staying up all night and those kind of things because you have high levels of NAD that um, help you to repair the damage and maintain the energy levels. But over time, these energy levels just uh, deplete because of many reasons. Like the lifestyle itself depletes the energy levels. If you have a worse lifestyle, you deplete the energy levels faster and you start to get sick faster as well. Whereas, yeah, if you stay on the healthy lifestyle for longer, then you will have higher levels of NAD for later. And uh, theoretically, you will also um, postpone the aging process by doing that. And this is also reflected in uh, the elderly who have higher levels of NAD, so the ones who uh, take care of themselves, the, who are healthy, living the healthy lifestyle, they have higher levels of NAD, and uh, they also show less of this age rate decline. So they are still cognitively and physically very uh, acute uh, because of their high levels of NAD and their lifestyle. Whereas people who don't have the healthy lifestyle, they show lower levels of NAD and they also age faster. They uh, develop the hallmarks of aging and they develop age-related diseases much faster. 
NAD boosters are quite popular at the moment, and uh, things like NMN nicotinamide mononucleotide or NR nicotinamide riboside, or as well as like NAD IVs, different kinds of NAD patches, they will they will uh, raise NAD levels, and uh, raising NAD levels with, for for example, NMN has been shown to improve insulin sensitivity, increase energy levels, DNA repair, provide neuroprotection, weight loss. Gera protection and mitochondrial protection. So uh, the NAD boosters, they do work in uh, raising NAD levels. Pretty much all of them do. Like there's a debate about which one is the best. Is it the NMN or is it nicotinamide riboside? I personally think that yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, like, yeah, they will all raise NAD levels. At least they have been shown all of them to uh, raise NAD levels. Uh, it's just, yeah, like which one is going to be the best, that's up to like debate and uh, we need to figure that out within the next few years. But they do raise energy levels and they do improve metabolic health and uh, energy, essentially health span, improving health span. So the, the th difference between, you know, taking NAD boosters as well as producing it naturally is that, you know, there's uh, only like a very small amount you can actually get from NAD boosters because the vast majority of your NAD gets produced through recycling. Your body is always producing NAD, your body is always consuming NAD, and uh, the vast majority of that comes from the salvage pathway or the recycling pathway. There is no like clear number to this, but it's estimated like 80 or 90% of your NAD that you produce on a daily basis comes from the salvage pathway or how much NAD you recycle. Very small of it comes from uh, food, so food precursors contribute very little, and uh, precursors, yeah, like I said, they do work in the short term, but if you don't have the salvage pathway working properly, then you're not going to recycle that NAD uh, either, so it, you know, it's a short-term fix for sure, it's uh, beneficial for many situations, but uh, in the long term you still want to focus on maintaining the salvage pathway of keeping your body's own uh, NAD boosting pathways active. And that's what we'll talk about closer. So this is the scheme of the NAD pathways, the production path that pathways that your body has. So NAD is here. The uh, food pathways are here up. Uh, price handler pathway converts nicotinic acid or NAS in vitamin B3 that you get from animal protein primarily, converts that into NAD. There's the de novo biosynthesis pathway that converts tryptophan and other amino acid into NAD, so tryptophan from, again, animal protein as well as pumpkin seeds and some other plant foods, but primarily, yeah, like animal protein tends to have the food precursors for NAD. There's also the uh, salvage pathway that we talked about, and this one, again, is the vast majority of your NAD comes from this, because whenever you do produce NAD, whether that be from the price handler pathway, the, the Nova biosynthesis pathway, or by taking supplements like NR or NMN, then all of that, you know, gets converted into NAD, but that NAD gets broken down again, and uh, it goes into the salvage pathway. So if you don't have the salvage pathway working properly, then you can take the booster, but it doesn't get recycled, and you lose it out, you essentially urinate it out, and um, in the long term, it's not, you know, sustainable in terms of that, you need to have the salvage pathway working properly so that wherever the NAD is coming from, it gets recycled and it's uh, reused. Different kinds of uh, enzymes also consume NAD, like sirtuins, PARPs, which are DNA repair, protein CD38 and CD157, those are inflammation related, so yeah, like a bad lifestyle, too much DNA damage and too much inflammation, too much oxidative stress consumes NAD because it's being used for repair. And uh, even, yeah, producing NAD from any source will direct it back into the salvage pathway. In the salvage pathway, you have this enzyme called NAMPT, which uh, is short for nicotinamide adenine phosphoribosyl transferase, or NAMPT for short. And uh, this is like the bottleneck in the salvage pathway. This is what determines how much NAD gets recycled in the salvage pathway. So this is kind of critical to have this enzyme working properly because if this is offline, then uh, yeah, you're not going to recycle the NAD. This is like, yeah, the bottleneck, the crucial, the gauntlet, <laughs> if you will. And uh, NAMPT then actually, yeah, 
produces NMN and NMN gets converted into NAD. If you take a supplement like nicotinamide riboside, then uh, nicotinamide riboside gets converted into NMN first before it goes into NAD. There's another precursor called nicotinamide, which is a form of niacin. You can get that from that, you can get that from a supplement as well, and this is also a precursor that goes into the salvage pathway. The, uh, the NAMPT enzyme is, like I said, the bottleneck, the crucial part in NAD production, and uh, NAMPT itself is linked to the circadian rhythms. It's actually dependent of CERT1, which is a circadian gene. So uh, what this means is that if your circadian rhythms are misaligned and they're not working properly, then you're not going to have the NAPT enzyme working either. And as a result, your NAD levels will decrease or you're not producing NAD that much. So what you want is to have the circadian rhythms pretty much aligned and synchronized and working properly, your sleep wakefulness cycles, because this is what uh, enables your body to produce NAD on autopilot. A little bit about the circadian rhythms. So circadian rhythms, your sleep wakefulness cycles, diurnal rhythms, what you want to call them, and uh, they control pretty much everything in your body. Humans are diurnal creatures. We were supposed to be awake at uh, daytime and sleep at night. And your body has evolutionarily developed these different clocks and uh, cycles to accommodate that natural cycle. So uh, there's the master clock inside the brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus that then controls all other minor clocks, peripheral clocks in uh, other organs like the liver, heart, pancreas, as well as every cell. Every cell and organ has its own small clock that is linked to the master clock inside the brain. And this regulates sleep frequency cycles, your physical performance, cognitive performance, uh, organ output, as well as different hormones and digestion and yeah, mood. Everything is related to this. Things that control the circadian rhythms are light. This is the biggest one. So uh, any kind of wavelengths of light stimulate the suprachiasmatic nucleus through the eyes and uh, naturally you want to get this morning sunlight to kickstart this process and align yourself with the circadian rhythms. Physical movement does so as well, temperatures do it as well as feeding times all have an effect on the circadian clock system. If your circadian rhythms are disrupted and misaligned then what happens is that you turn on all these aging pathways such as you have higher inflammation, higher risk of heart disease, metabolic syndrome, weight gain, diabetes, DNA damage, neurodegeneration, and uh, yeah, just aging is uh, much faster if your circadian rhythms are disrupted. And what the problem is that you also turn off all these longevity pathways. You turn off CERT1, you turn off NAD recycling, you uh, reduce autophagy, you reduce DNA repair. So it's like a double whammy in terms of that you increase the aging things and you decrease the anti-aging uh, pathways. Whereas if your circadian rhythms are aligned naturally, then you do the opposite. You reduce the inflammation, you reduce weight gain, and you increase NAD, you increase DNA repair. So uh, being aligned with the circadian rhythms literally keeps your body in a state of, you know, in a state of um, aging as slow as possible. Whereas if you're experiencing a lot of uh, shift work and uh, jet lag and uh, yeah, just having like a very chaotic circadian rhythm, then you're aging faster essentially. Here's like a little pit stop to give an overview about this circadian entity concept that I coined. So uh, if your circadian rhythms are aligned, you will have CERT1 activated, which enables NAMPT to recycle NAD through the silage pathway. As a result, you will have increased longe longevity epigenetics and reduced hallmarks of aging. And you will be pretty much aging slower and you'll have increased health span. If your circadian rhythms are disrupted, CERT1 is offline, NAMPT gets blocked, NAD recycling decreases through the salvage pathway because it's offline, and uh, you uh, reduce DNA repair and longevity epigenetics, and you increase the hallmarks of aging. As a result, you're going to age faster. We'll talk a bit more about how do you achieve the circadian rhythm alignment and the main rhythm to pay attention to is the cortisol, melatonin, diurnal rhythm. So these two hormones control your sleep wake cycles the most. And uh, cortisol, the stress hormone, or the wakefulness hormone, is uh, what rises at dawn, peaks at 9 a.m., 
drops down during daytime and stays low when you're sleeping. Cortisol's job is to wake you up. Its job is to kickstart the circadian rhythm, give you energy, increase fat burning, and yeah, align yourself with the day and night cycles. Melatonin, the sleep hormone or the hormone of darkness, it uh, stays low during daytime when the sun is out and it rises before bed and stays elevated when you're sleeping. And melatonin's job is to, yeah, help you to sleep and conduct a lot of different kinds of repair processes and anti-aging processes because yeah melatonin it's more than sleep it's actually in my opinion the most powerful anti-aging hormone your body has because of you know many things it coordinates and conducts all these uh, longevity processes and anti-aging processes repair processes together in your sleep so melatonin coordinates autophagy or self uh, and cell recycling it coordinates apoptosis or the destruction of cells or uh, dead cells it uh, is a very powerful antioxidant it helps with sleep quality brain detox bone health growth hormone is uh, released together with melatonin maintains immune system function reduces inflammation helps with fat burning as well as maintenance of uh, memories so melatonin is the number one anti-aging hormone in my opinion so one of the first principles for maintaining this circadian alignment is going to be morning light exposure and uh, morning light exposure is going to stimulate the suprachiasmatic nucleus in the brain, which then helps you to uh, kickstart the circadian rhythm, aligns your body with the uh, day-night cycles, helps to produce cortisol, which is beneficial in the morning. You want to have this small rise of cortisol in the morning to give you energy. It's going to improve your mood, metabolism, digestion. And uh, funny enough, the morning sunlight or the morning light exposure, bright light exposure, doesn't have to be always sunlight, just like a bright light. This will also help you to produce melatonin at night, uh, so by aligning your body with the circadian rhythms. Rule or principle number two is going to be block blue light at night. So um, melatonin is uh, very sensitive to light and that's why melatonin stays low during daytime. You get exposed to a lot of bright lights and sunlight is going to suppress melatonin production. The blue and green light between 550 to 400 nanometers this one inhibits melatonin a lot so up to like 90 percent of melatonin can be inhibited with artificial light like uh, your tv screen smartphone the ceiling lamp or any kind of artificial uh, lights they're going to inhibit melatonin a lot and um, this is going to have like a negative effect on your sleep quality and all these uh, repair processes Whereas red and amber lights that you naturally would get from sun sunset, sorry, and uh, like candlelight and uh, bonfires, this will uh, not inhibit melatonin. So the red and uh, amber lights are safe, but green and uh, blue light from artificial sources primarily is uh, suppressive of uh, melatonin. Naturally, the uh, wavelengths of light also follow a circadian rhythm so at noon and morning you have this kind of full spectrum you have a lot of uh, blue and green light as well as some red and amber light in the evening it shifts to more red and less blue and at night you have pretty much you know no blue and green light at all and a lot of uh, red light only you would you know naturally get in the modern world however you know you can disrupt that you have a lot of blue light even at you know middle of the night which is um, harmful for uh, the melatonin here is a brief overview of a human-centric circadian lighting or the uh, cycle. So in the morning, when you wake up, you want to ex get exposed to some bright lights. In the middle of the day is actually where it's the brightest at, uh, at uh, like noon. And evening is where you want to have the dim lights for uh, optimal melatonin production. Melatonin levels also follow like a you know like an aging trend similar to energy levels so when you're young you produce a whole lot of melatonin when you hit puberty your melatonin levels decline and that's where you also begin to develop like uh, sexual characteristics based on your gender uh, during the puberty because of this drop in melatonin so melatonin inhibits the development of um, your uh, sexual features and those kind of things um, and whereas after that it uh, drops down when you're old you actually also produce very little melatonin which is um, you know harmful for many things it you know helps or it hel prevents you from sleeping that well and it also prevents you from 
conducting all these uh, antioxidant defense processes in your sleep. So aging dampens all of the circadian hormones. You produce less melatonin, you produce less cortisol in the morning, you have flatter temperature swings, so everything becomes more dull and uh, flat <laughs> compared to youth. When you're young, you produce a lot of these swings. You produce a lot of cortisol and very little cortisol. You produce a lot of melatonin before you go to sleep, etc. Whereas if you're older, this flattens out and you have less of these uh, contrasts, which is actually harmful for aging. You want to have these big swings. And uh, part of the reason why people start to age faster, in my opinion, would also be because of this, at some point they just experience this aging of the circadian hormones so that they start to produce less melatonin and less cortisol. And as a result, you know, again, they'll sleep worse and they'll have less antioxidant defense in their sleep. Fortunately, it's been found that uh, this process can also be rewired or prevented. And uh, the key to this is NAD. So if you have NAD, enough NAD, you can prevent the, uh, this kind of uh, bad trend in the circadian hormones. So you want to have high levels of NAD through the circadian NAD system. And uh, things that help to maintain that, things that help you to maintain high levels of NAD are calorie restriction, eating less calories, intermittent fasting or time restricted eating, being aligned with the circadian rhythms, which means, you know, morning sunlight, uh, darkness at night, high levels of melatonin, blocking blue light, those kind of things, and uh, exercise. Exercise is also um, raising NAD levels. So they're all the kind of healthy lifestyle habits we already know, those maintain NAD levels. And those uh, essentially help you to keep your uh, circadian hormones working uh, properly. Things that wreck this system, things that damage the circadian clocks, things that reduce your NAD levels and uh, make you age faster are shift work, jet lag, circadian disruption of any kind, being inflamed chronically, high levels of inflammation, high levels of oxidative stress from bad lifestyle, uh, and uh, obesity, being overweight is like um, a state of meta-inflammation, chronic inflammation all the time. Third principle is to also sleep enough because, yeah, most of the repair processes happen in your sleep as well as NAD is regenerated during your sleep. For adults, you will need at least six to eight hours and um, yeah, optimally seven to eight hours. If you exercise a lot or have other like high damage, then you may need like nine hours, but yeah, less than six is where you have increased risk of mortality and that's where you start to experience more inflammation and uh, lower testosterone and those kind of things. Inflammation or inflammation as it's called is the principal consumer of NAD and uh, decreaser what reduces NAD. Inflammation raises different kinds of inflammatory cytokines and uh, CD38 is uh, one of the main ones that uh, consumes NAD as well as decreases NMN. So reactive oxygen species from oxidative stress, they increase DNA damage, the, which increases PARP activation and also reduces NAD levels from that. And if you have low levels of NAD, then your risk of developing metabolic disorders and metabolic syndrome is much greater, and you will also have higher cell senescence. So the zombie cells uh, are more widespread if you have low levels of NAD, and at the same time, the cell senescence itself also decreases NAD through inflammation and uh, DNA damage. So you want to avoid pretty much unnecessary inflammation and unnecessary oxidative stress on your system. Okay, what promotes NAD recycling? So, number one is uh, circadian alignment, being aligned with the circadian rhythms, getting exposed to morning uh, daylight, sunlight, even if it's cloudy, you will still get that signal. So, um, if it's cloudy, then the, the luminosity of that environment is still like a thousand times big, bigger than the light in your uh, indoors. So, even if it's cloudy, you still want to go outside a little bit for a few minutes to uh, get that bright light exposure. You can also use like these different uh, face lamps and uh, sad lamps, seasonal affective disorder lamps, uh, yeah, bright lamps in the morning to also get that same kind of response. And in the evening, you want to pretty much do the opposite. You want to avoid bright lights. You want to be in like you know dim lights, amber and red lights. Use blue blocking glasses and uh, yeah, avoid screen time. Number two is exercise, so regular exercise, both cardiovascular and resistance training, both of them increase NAD recycling and um, maintain 
this uh, kind of health. And lastly, time sheet eating, which uh, refers to intermittent fasting, eating within a certain time frame, whether that be fasting for 16 hours and eating within eight, eating once a day, eating twice a day, whichever form it is, all of them have a positive effect on NAD recycling by activating the NAPT enzyme. And uh, yeah, from a circadian rhythm side, then uh, time of eating is also beneficial for sleep. So you wanna like pretty much stop eating a few hours before bed uh, because that can be um, harmful for melatonin production. And uh, you know, if your body has to digest the food, then it can't repair itself. So if you have like too much food sitting in your stomach or you have high blood sugar levels in your sleep, then uh, yeah, your body isn't repairing itself and isn't turning on these longevity pathways. All right, so conclusion overview for the circadian NAD concept to work and to reduce the hallmarks of aging and increase longevity epigenetics, then you need to have circadian alignment. This is kind of the bottleneck, the crucial part of recycling NAD. For that, bright light exposure in the morning for a few minutes even is uh, good. You want to block blue light at night, artificial light, primarily blue and green light, red and amber lights are fine or if you have a lot of blue light, then just use the blue blocking glasses. Regular exercise, at least a few times a week, I think three times a week is uh, optimal, three to four. Time machine eating, uh, from this, you, you know, you just, you can do whichever form, but uh, the main tenet is that, yeah, stop eating at least three or four hours before bed and don't eat immediately after waking up. So usually people eat like, you know, within, within eight hours or 10 hours two meals, something like that. And lastly, avoid inflammation. So unnecessary inflammation from like environmental sources as well as dietary sources. So inflammation can be processed food. It can be some sort of allergies. It can also be chemicals, you know, pollution, all those things and uh, sleep deprivation. Those things all raise inflammation. So just live like a, you know, clean and healthy lifestyle. And I'm going to finish my presentation with a quote by Mahatma Gandhi. Each night when I go to sleep, I die and the next morning when I wake up I am reborn so this kind of yeah perfectly describes the process of NAD recycling as well as the process of autophagy the process of melatonin and the process of like anti-aging in general so all of these things happen in your sleep so yeah you're like metaphorically you die when you go to sleep because you're you know clearing out the old unworn uh, out and the dead cells and in the morning you wake up with uh, pretty much rejuvenated uh, cells all right, thank you for listening. My website is uh, seamland.com, email seam at seamland.com, and I'm uh, at seamland on Instagram and other social media platforms.